When the coppers they get rough, the pickets fly like a guitar, but they were working like the cops. We threw the bars and said goodnight, the right to pick it on the line. So long they take another town, they will not bring the miners down. If we don't miss and we go back, the Lord will greet us with the sack. So tighten your belt and break your teeth, let Maggie do an Edward in. <laughs> Did you enjoy that, love? I thought you would. books our schools could never teach. We face the taunt and the violence from Maggie Suggs in blue. When fighting for our freedom we've got nothing, nothing left to lose. We are women, we are strong, we are fighting for our lives side by side with the men who work the nation's mines. United by the struggle, united by the past, and it's here we go, here we go, we're the women of the working class. People now are beginning to realise that it has been called a political strike, it's a nationalised industry, it's forced to be political. It's government that's running it. And it's government now that are trying to tend to screw on the best set of working men in this country. The, I mean, we're called the enemy within. The enemy within. There's more miners give their lives for this country just doing the job than any other set of workers in this country. It's unbelievable. And we're the enemy within. Between 1947 and 1971, 18,000 miners were killed in the pit. Between 1951 and 1971, 1,700 of our old people died of pneumoconiosis in agony in their own living rooms. What about the kids? What about the kids that have been killed digging for bloody coal in the hillsides and the pickets who've been killed on the picket lines? So when they start talking about murder, we know what bloody hypocrites they are. The miners know more about bloody murder than they'll ever know. I want to appeal to the people in this room who belong to different trade unions. Stop talking about solidarity and get out and show solidarity. If you close our pit down, you don't just sack us or put us on the dole. What about your steel and your timber? You know, it's not just us what loses out. It's everybody else outside the industry what produce timber and steel, concrete, you know, different. And you just, uh, you just can't... Uh, they can see it, but they want to know nothing about it, this government. They know what's happening. They know it's wrong. But they just want to carry on and get the working class people so low that to the end of the day, we'll, 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 we'll be so low down, we'll, we won't be able to get up. So what do you do? You've got to stick on this fight. It's life or death decision. There is no decision for these people. They either fight or they go under. And uh, I'm glad to say that most of the younger members here, if you've looked outside, they are all young people. And the reason they're all out there fighting is because they're young, 
and they've got 30, 35, 40 years of working life in front of them. And what have they got to look forward to? Nothing. It's all right for the miners of 55 who might take 30,000 pounds. Their working life's finished. They've had their life. What about all those young kids outside there at 20, 25? Got two young an ankle snappers. What are they going to do? What's in it for their kids? Absolutely nothing. I'll be honest, I said you were following like slaughtered lambs. You were going down the road, you were all there. I said, but as weeks gone on and what I've seen on media and what I've heard and what I've had to do, I've learned to survive and I realise now I have a nine-year-old son. There's nothing for him. There's nothing for my son. He's 15 and he's left school. There's nothing for and him. And he's had his name down in the pit since he was 15 years old. And if he can't get a job at pit, well, I don't know what we're going to do. There's nothing for him. There's no qualifications whatsoever. To my lads, 10 and 12 year old. I mean, what's for them? My husband moved down here when he was 16 with his parents from the Durham coal fields. I mean, where you kind of keep moving every. 10 or 15 years, well, you know, everybody kind of keep moving like that. There's nowhere else to go. We are right. We're 100% right fighting for jobs for the future for our kids. There's nothing wrong in that, surely, is there? They talk about statistics, about the price of coal. The cost is our community is dying on the dole. In fighting for our freedom, we found ways to organise. Where women's liberation failed to move, this strike has mobilised. We are women, we are strong, we are fighting for our lives side by side with the men who work the nation's minds. United by the struggle, united by the past, and it's Here we go, here we go, with the women of the working class. And it's here we go, here we go, with the women of the working class. The other chip man is on here, let's forget what we've gone through in 11 months, regardless how we go back. But when we go back, we'll go back with his heads held high, having fought for something that we believe in, and had the guts and the courage to stay out and fight and never go at it. We've, we've done our best, and we'll continue doing it, and we'll back NUM. So it's only friend, Colbo's not his friend, the NUM is our friend. <laughs>